All right, welcome back to the Dr. Pepper All-Star Hearthstone Tournament. We are actually about to go into the final match between Ruxar and Koi to see who actually moves through. Not only have they already moved through for the final playoffs already, but they're actually deciding of their uh, final seeds for it, which can actually be an important factor in who actually takes home the final prize. Um, joining with me casting is none other than Kungin. Hello, boys. Um, I'm really looking forward to this game, especially since we get to see Grim Patron again, and also the Hybrid Hunter. Since I haven't seen that deck before, it's really, it's nice to see how it works. I'm looking forward to playing it myself, actually. Uh, is there anyone you consider the favorite for the final? Um, honestly, I'd have to give it to Koi. I mean, I, I like how Ruxar has been playing, but I really think that Koi just has better decks from what we've seen. Um, yeah. Again, the Hybrid Hunter and the Patron Warrior are without a doubt like the two best decks on ladder right now. It, it's because there really are not any counters to them. People have well, tried many things and just have all failed. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ruxar is playing Handlock though which should be the strongest deck against the Grim Patron at least. Might not be a direct counter, but probably the best deck against it at least. I, I so would if have you to can agree. get that matchup. I, I, I'm really excited. I would like, love to see that matchup, but I, I think if Koi plays it correctly, I think he might have advantage over the Handlock if, if Ruxar just does not draw the cards he needs to deal with the Patron's burst damage. Mm -hmm. The game can end very quickly. Yeah, that is true. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of deck they start with. Uh, if I was Koi, I would probably start with the Hunter, since you might get... If if Ruxer plays what he did before he played, I think he played Hunter and Handlock, so then he's either getting a mirror or a favorite, or a favorable matchup against the Handlock. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree. I think Hunter is always the same <clears> start in really any tournament in any yeah. sort of manner. So it looks like the game will be starting fairly soon. And here we go. We're getting into it. Um, so let's see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Hunter Mirror match. And it looks like we are getting yeah. that. So from what we've seen, we think it will be the Hybrid Hunter versus Hybrid Hunter. Yep, it's... Uh, yeah, I think that's what both of them have been playing so far. So unless they change their decks, they are still playing the hybrid version. And it looks like I, neither player has an optimal starting hand here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really interesting that, to me personally, that everyone is playing this hybrid version since I have not seen it before this tournament myself. Uh, like, no face hunters or mid-range at all. Everyone is playing the hybrid version. That's... Uh, I guess that really means that the hybrid version is a lot stronger than the other two decks. It's just the best of both worlds <clears throat> in yeah. really every way. I mean, obviously, Face Hunter still does have advantage over the Hybrid Hunter in the mirror match. But versus everything else, I think the Hybrid Hunter just is overall better. So I think that's why you kind of tilt your odds in that manner by thinking that there's going to be more of other decks than there are of just Hunter. Wow, this is a uh, pretty. I mean, whenever you start with a Lepernum, that's really good. Um, and his opponent doesn't out. really have any good play to counter it either. Now, what is he trying to do by covering up all of his cards? He he did that the previous game as well. He's just. I think he's just trying to show his opponent that he has a lot of different options. <laughs> he well played him when he but finally played Lepernum. Lepernum. But just yeah. by doing that and then playing Lepernome, it's like, <laughs> you're just completely full of it. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's so it actually makes sense a really like good a later, Make much more sense in like a later turn, but... Yeah. I, I really like coining out the Haunted Creeper here. It'll contest yeah. Lepernome, and then you can Freezing Trap, whatever his 2-drop is, especially if it's either Haunted Creeper or Mad Scientist. Yeah, if he didn't draw that, it'd be looking pretty bad for him. That was the, basically the perf perfect draw there. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we have Ruxar here with an easy follow-up by just using the free 
freezing mm -hmm. itself. Yeah, definitely freezing trap here. It's really important to be the one that, you know, starts doing the damage as well. Because then you might, at some point in the game, you might force your opponent to start trading while you're going face all the time. Mm -hmm. So the life total is very, very important when you play against Hunter, which both players are. <clears throat> Since there is always, there is always that switch. At some point they stop trading and they just all in face, even if they don't play a face Hunter. Exactly. Yeah. What would you do here in Toy's position? I mean, you you kind of know that it's Freezing Trap. So, yeah. I guess he plays his own Freezing Trap. Freezing and... Trap a Lever Gnome? I don't know. That's kind of really strange. Uh, what else would he have done? Abuse? I think I would have just thrown down the Abusive there, personally. Oh, yeah. It feels really bad dropping that on turn two, though, especially <laughs> when the other guy has board. But yeah. Maybe you're forced to do it, because you do have, I mean, you have to play something, right? Because if, if you think about it, it literally, it's, it trades just as well as a Freezing Trap does with Leopard Gnome. Oh, wow. He got the Huffer. I thought he, oh. Oh, oh he's playing Explosive. Oh, that is an extremely good pickup. Yeah, you just go a explosive abuse here. Wow, that's really good. That was a great top deck. Yep. Oh, that's a really good top deck as well. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, here's an interesting question. So what, what do you do here? I, I think you can. <sighs> I mean, you kind of have... Oh, I mean, you have to proc the trap sooner or later and you have a you have three minions on hand that dies to explosive trap right now so oh, i guess no. you just proc it and play animal companion he goes face for it even though yeah. it's his only choice yeah i think it's even if he knows it's explosive i think that's the only choice he has oh wow another what, offer abusive why didn't you oh why what oh that's really strange i think he misplayed he messed up yeah uh, yeah he and messed he's up just like you know that reaction when you get Huffer, it's like, oh, go face. <laughs> yeah, he messed up. He's definitely gonna... He has to play it anyway, even though he missed two damage. Ooh. It's just it's just really awkward That's doing it after you attacked. <laughs> um, well, I guess Rockstar is definitely not an easy trade here. You just drop... I think you just drop your Wolf Rider Leper and trade it for two here. Then what type of uh... You could clear with kill command and play leper gnome, but it's... then you just have a leper gnome on board. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to push back before the life total is, you know, too far apart between the two players. Oh, that's a great card to draw here. Yep. Throw that down. They are they are both top taking really good this game. They're always whatever they draw, they have been playing pretty much. But here's the thing, uh, Ruxar will be getting out the high main before Koi. Mm-hmm, that's really important. <clears throat> I don't see- oh, another good top deck. Just throw down the Honey Creeper, Leopard now. Yeah. And I think- see, here's the issue. If you go face and he has Unleash the Hounds, then you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think you have to trade at least one of the units, the Leper Gnome, into one of the two ones. Do you think you trade both? It feels... I don't know. You have a... You're pretty, you're pretty low on life. I mean, he doesn't know it, but it's better just to go face here. Yeah. But like you said, if you're explosive or unleashed, then you're really screwed. I, I, I think I would just trade abusive and go face with the other guy. <clears throat> like that. Yeah, trading a 3-1 into a leopard that still lost 2 damage doesn't really feel that good. It's really scared of the unleash here. You can feel it. Yeah. Oh no. It's a high main. No answer to it. Yeah, well he does. Hmm. 
Well, he can actually answer it with kill command and trading though. Uh, maybe even draw an owl. That would be insane. Oh, an owl would be perfect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you definitely trade here to... Uh... I like trading the Lepernome into the 3-1 and then just going face with... I kind of, I mean, maybe, maybe killing you kind of want to protect your high main as well. I mean, if you clear, if you clear almost everything here, then the freezing trap might feel really strong later on, possibly against the high main. <clears throat> so how much damage does he? You just drop a counter high main here. Oh, oh, I don't know. He would go down to two life. I don't know. It's ten damage on board. You're only at six life if you do that. Well, not six, seven. I guess you trade one. But it gives us the two. option of top decking the other kill command. <clears throat> no, he needs to go face. Oh, you mean for it? Did he have a two turn kill there? If he top deck kill commands, he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's going to be awkward if he does that. <laughs> Oh, but now he could actually run into the 1-1, one, one, unleash, and freezing trap the high main. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's why I like trading the previous turn, so you get to use this freezing trap on the high main. He does have a wolf rider though, luckily. But yeah, I mean, it's the correct play here. You just unleash freezing here, power phase. I don't think well, any... Ma Ma said once, if Jaime hits Ace, you win. <laughs> I think I remember that. I've heard Caster say it, at least. <clears throat> <gasps> oh, <gasps> shit. But he did have freezing. No. He does have freezing, though, so it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah. You're right. No. Almost. Almost. I don't think he had any way to do Because think about right? it, if he had the Honey Creeper down still, it would have popped back the Honey Creeper. Because hmm. he would have not traded... Oh no. Oh yeah, if he went right. face, he wouldn't have traded everything, right? No, he could... exactly. Well, he could have traded both of them. He could have traded least. both still, but it would but have it's been... it's more like... unlikely for him to do that. Yeah, nope. so if he went face, maybe the Creeper would have lived. But still, nah, maybe not. I, I think you will always clear this since you had freezing for the high main. So, Ruxa, <clears throat> game one in the finals, the mm. All Star tournament. Can Koi come back from here? Well, most likely Grim Patron coming up here. So, Grim Patron is. Ooh, how does it do against the hybrid one? Because when I played Grim Patron, Face Hunter was very annoying now and then. It's, <clears throat> I think it's a very close matchup, but I think yeah. Patriot has a slight advantage in it. Mm -hmm. It's a great yeah. hand so far to have against Handlock. I'm always tempted to keep Kill Command in this matchup just because of how important of a card it is, but it's just never something you want at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you still discard it, even though you always wanted to burn them down at the end. You kind of have to discard it. I mean, it's only really good at the very end when you uh, go wait. for the kill. Yep, Haunted Creeper too. I'm not sure I like that, but... But, but, but there is no Grim Pattern here. He has changed. No, because it's it Ruxar, Ruxar that one. And he's playing Handlock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. So, yeah, Koi has to win to play the Grim Pattern deck. Now here's... Oh, it's so awkward if he drops it now. But he... oh. This is what I was saying earlier, is you don't Ouch. drop exclusive if you're first. You do drop it if you're second. Because it gives the handlock a free uh, mortal coil on this turn. Yeah, exactly. And Druxar is trying to be sneaky by going over every card. Once again. He only does it the first turn, but never again <laughs> during the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I you're right though, he does do it the first turn. No, yeah, every every game is done at the first turn, but never again, which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> oh, 
I think it personally would be more valuable to do it like later on in the game. Make them really, really question what you have at that point. Because in the beginning, it doesn't really matter what they have anyway, because you're sitting with so many cards. So you can't really set your opponent on any cards. Tapping here isn't really bad. There's another mortal coil, that'll be useful. Yeah, mortal coils are great against hunters. I was surprised that he threw the second one away. I mean... I mean, they will always play a bunch of one life units no matter what. <laughs> and aminate it. Can even use it against the bigger units as well if you hurt them with something else. <clears throat> he does not yeah, have an out. Here. I mean, I, I think you have to. <clears throat> I mean, you have to go for it. You can't really mortal coil here. It, it's not the winning play to mortal coil here. I think. Mm -hmm. I think I have to agree. I have to agree with you on that one. You have to go for the play that might win you the game. Just pray he doesn't have an owl. Oh wow, freezing trap. That was not a good card to draw. I don't think it's a good one. Well, I mean, I guess he could freezing trap and just hero power. That one's yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. I, I like it. It's not like the warlock has any charges, so the Drake will but go back. So you just oh wow yeah, yeah, yeah less so that it's more so you just use Argus here and pass mm -hmm. and then you just pop your Argus back yeah you you have to exactly you have to taunt up this guy here but do you actually Argus don't you coil one and uh, use the Sun Fury instead I think you want to save the Sun Fury more so yeah it's cheaper to use later on. But but next turn but is probably. I mean, he kind of he's he probably has to heal the next turn. Depending. You're right. On... Actually, I think you may be right. Mortar coiling and then Sun Fury is better. Oh, Dark Bomb. Oh, that might be pretty good as well. It depends on what. It, can he do anything with the Sun Fury the upcoming turn? Not really. Yeah, I think I like. Yeah, I like Sun Fury better as well. And just let it stay there. Let's see if he can get an owl. Nope. Oh, Unleash is not what he wanted. Nope. Oh, this is, he's in a really terrible situation here. He needs an owl, like right away. I guess. And the did. worst part is, is he go horn bow? Oh, hero he power. If he doesn't attack to kill this Drake, the ooze is just going to kill it. Oh wow, he has a fucking ooze. Holy shit, yeah. So he's, he's looking very good for the hand look here. He's gonna trade? He's gonna quick shot even and waste the card draw? I don't like that. I do not like that at all. You need to keep oh. I think you need to keep that keep that uh, quick shot for burst. This ooze is such a good play here, he has two secrets up. So I guess you just ooze and dark bomb. Ooze dark bomb, it. yeah. Just go face, and then you have heals. Yeah, I, I don't, I can't really see the hunter winning this game, because he should be able to survive until Jaraxxus is up with a heal bot, siphon, this is mean. and taunt. Koi thinks he's Koi thinks he's in such a good spot now. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I've got this, and then the ooze comes down. Come on, we gotta see some DM. Where's the sorry? <laughs> oh, no, man. Uh, Too well, well man. I don't know. I mean, he put it in the deck, so it's really, really nice choice by Rexer. Oh, it was a very smart choice with the meta. Yeah. Between definitely. all the hunters and the Page Warriors. Yeah, pretty much everyone we've seen so far has played a hybrid hunter. I think like 80% of the people today. I think so. Is Healbot his only option? I mean, he could Siphon Soul, but that's... Bold. Nah, I, I, I like trading Healbot here. So 
See, trading Keobot does actually allow for a giant... Well, no, you can't taunt it up then, because it's on Furious 4. Oh. Oh, that's not a good pickup. That is not good. <laughs> that is the last thing you want to play right now. He can't use any of his cards right now. Yeah, he will definitely survive until the two axes. So. Uh, is there any... Yeah, I guess he feels like he has to taunt up in some kind of way here. Yeah. Or no. He's no. keeping the taunt up. Just giant attack. Hmm. I would be afraid. Three cards and hero power? I find that really risky. Really risky. Why would he do that? Why not taunt something out? Don't unleash yet. Don't do it. Oh, he did it. <laughs> so the issue with unleash here is... Well, I guess he could top deck a kill command then. Mm hmm. Oh, I really don't like that he didn't taunt anything up there. I don't understand it. If he taunted something up there, he could play Jiraxis the upcoming turn after this turn. So he'd taunt oh, it there. True. Yeah. Now he puts himself in like kill range. That was really bad not taunting up the previous turn. So he would have taken zero damage if he taunted up then. Here's a problem. He cannot siphon soul and taunt. Yeah, exactly. But not only so, that, you uh, can't... Arcane, Arcane Golem is lethal, for example. Even if he clears. Kill command's lethal. If he has another quick shot, it's lethal. Um, even Glaive Zuka. Oh, I think a taunt is more important. Unless he's killing both with his minions. Or, okay. Mm -hmm. That stops Glaive Zuka from being lethal. I think 8 on phase here is really important. Try to set up for a kill somehow here. Lepronome's not gonna do it. Nope. is gonna take this match 2 0. Does he. Yeah, well, does he have the lethal? No. He doesn't have lethal yet. He's one off with Jiraxus. And he gets another anti heal lot. This is mean. Yeah, well, the game is definitely wait, over. Wait, wait. Least, no, yeah. no, 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 no. He did that wrong. You kill the Leper Gnome first, then Jiraxis. That is true. But I think he's just going all in phase here, so... I guess it doesn't really matter. GG. That game over. Oh, he did put himself at risk there, though. Yeah. He could have he could have avoided, like, he could have top decked the kill there. He could have avoided that if he taunted the previous turn. Mm -hmm. But really well played, really well played. Yeah, that was played really well by both players. <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations definitely. to Ruxar. Actually, congratulations to both players. As both of them mm -hmm. are moving on to the top 16 tournament, the playoffs of the Dr. Pepper All-Star Tournament. Um, so what did you think about the matches today? Yeah, I think uh, we've seen a lot of good matches, especially the last... The last four games we watched were really good. All the players in the semifinals and even the quarterfinals has been playing really good, I think. Uh, early on in the tournament, there was a lot of questionable plays, but uh, they played really well here at the end. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree. We had some great games. We started to see some diversity in decks at the end, of, but you were right about there just being a lot, a lot of hunters. Yeah. Hunters was definitely the most played class today. In the beginning we saw a lot of Druids as well, but uh, it didn't look like any of the like final players played Druid. Hmm. But then if you took Which, a look, uh, yeah, the Hunter it seems to be what cost Koi that match. You just couldn't mm -hmm. get a, couldn't pull out, pull out a win with it. So once again, congratulations to Ruxar. And uh, I want to quickly say thank you to Dr. Pepper All-Star Hearthstone Tournament. For uh, putting on such a great, great qualifier, for uh, Kinguin.net for being one of the major sponsors and actually putting on this stream, they were actually really great for some last-minute notice on everything. But they like actually pulled everything together, which was awesome. So I really appreciate yep. all the help with that, and thank you for Kinguin Kung for co-casting with me. Thank you. It's been great. <clears throat> 
So again, yeah. if for anyone who wants to enter this tournament, I highly advise it. It's a great tournament. It's really well run. Games are streamed, and it gets you into the playoffs of the final uh, top 16 Dr. Pepper All-Star tournament. There's two more, one at the end of June and then one in the middle of July. But I think that is all. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed. Yep, that's it. Thank you all for watching.